Hey guys, uh, welcome to this video. Uh, here I'm going to show you my 12 volt setup in the camera trailer where I install a Interdrive DC DC 40 amp charger, a Victron AC DC 15 amp charger, a Victron Smart Shunt a battery monitor, and at the end of the video, I'll show you some stats of what the 50 litre Waco uh, Swaco fan lights and a shower setup drawer uh, when running. Hi guys, just going to talk you through our current 12 volt setup and um, what I plan to do I suppose. I'm uh, currently running a full river 105 um, battery, uh, about 105 amp hours and a CTEC 20 amp DC DC charger with a solar input. I basically plan to move that battery over towards the back, just give me a bit more room in the front here. Um, just for storage of bits and pieces, it's always a bit of a pain. Uh, with the battery in the way uh, and in the process I'm going to change out the CTEC battery charger with a Enerdrive DC DC uh, 40 amp charger uh, reason being is that uh, yeah at the moment I'm getting probably 36 48 hours out of the AGM at the moment I want to sort of prolong that sort of out to sort of three days if I can without having to run any solar just in case for bad weather uh, yeah and bits and pieces I suppose as we go along Alright guys, keep updated. Right, now with the battery removed, I'm going to remove any excess cables I don't need. Uh, one being this uh, old Dick Smith 600 watt inverter here. Uh, I ended up getting a new Victron one, I believe. Uh, pure sine wave, so be able to charge laptops and bits and pieces. Alright, so I've uh, installed the Victron Blue Smart Charger 15 amp. Uh, the DC DC charger uh, in location here is just roughly in place, uh, and that's the new location of the battery, not fixed down as yet, but uh, just a rough location. And uh, so I'll start all my wiring and cabling, and I'll show you how that ends up. All right, just a bit of a progress update. Uh, I've installed the solar 50 amp fuse. To the DC DC charger, which has got the uh, MPPT uh, solar regulator in it. Uh, installed the 50 amp fuse, uh, which goes to the batteries as well. Uh, also installed the Smart Shunt, Victron Smart Shunt, which will be able to uh, give me an update of battery state of charge, amps used, and all this other useful stuff, hopefully, uh, via the app. So for those who don't know, uh, N-Drive have the two uh, lugs uh, for your house battery to go into, two for your solar and two which head out to your auxiliary battery. Right, now that I've mounted everything in here, I need to run some new wiring from the DC DC charger. This one's a bigger unit than I previously had. Uh, putting out 40 amps. Uh, yeah, the previous wiring, as you can see, is a fair bit smaller than uh, what we're currently running. So, I'm gonna run some new wiring, which is 6 BNS. Uh, it's rated for 100 amps, so I'll run that. From the uh, inner drive DC there, uh, all out to the front, and um, replace existing and some plug. So as you can see, this wiring's a fair bit smaller. All right, just a little hurdle I come across. There's a few different uh, earth wires here. Now, I'm not too sure which one was for the Anderson plug. So I've just hooked up a little batch pack I got with some alligator clips on the terminals. Let's come in here and put them on the Anderson plug and just give me a reading. Batch pack's a bit flat, but it gives me a general idea. And I'll just come back around, disconnect it off this earth. Plug it on the plug it on the next one. And yep, that's confirmed it from or after. Alright, just finished installing the new Anderson plug. Uh, see the wires obviously a lot uh, thicker than the previous ones. Front on the drawbar. Up underneath. Up through an existing hole that was 
in there. Yeah, it's going through an existing hole that was in the bottom of the trailer. It's up there and all wired in now. Everything's all wired in, plumbed in. Just need to uh, secure the battery now into the into position, stop it from moving around. Alright, just making some hold down bolts for the battery. Just use a little, uh, bit of box section and an old bolt that's holding the camera trailer box down. So let's put a bit of a slot in the bottom. Now I can just slide it in. Like so. And I'll uh, just bolt it underneath. I just made the second one up um, for the other side. All right, there's the finished product. Battery's all bolted down in place. There's the Victron shunt. You're gonna drive 40 amp DC DC charger and the AC DC 15 amp charger. Hey right, guys, let's get a quick rundown on the Victron smart shunt. Uh, just download uh, an app onto your phone and it just Bluetooth to the shunt. Uh, data on the on the app is your state of charge, voltage, current amp, um, consumed amp hours, and that's uh, pretty responsive. Click on some lights, almost instantly you can see it's drawn 0.27 of an amp. That's pretty good just uh, to see what you're doing. Uh, there's also a history on it, uh, it just shows uh, your last charge. Use 26 amps, um, cumulative amps, that's in total since I've had the, the app. Um, time since last full charge, so 22.48 hours, so nearly 24 hours and you know, 26 amp hours in that 24 hours, so it sort of tells me 48 hours I'll be at 50% uh, discharge, so yeah, and you've got a sort of current draw on consumed amp hours. No problem with the sort of live data there is as soon as your phone goes off screen goes off and you start your phone back up um, yeah it resets and starts again so you really can't see ongoing uh, trends which is a bit of a bugger but yeah that's about it hey guys uh, the fridge just cut in um, so for anyone who's interested the Waco 50 litre, uh, when running, is drawing 4.48 amps. Now 4.5, so that's been uh, on for you know, 22 hours, 24 hours now. So it is a cold fridge, but there is nothing in it, so yeah, 4.6 amps. Hey right, guys, now it's all wired up. The battery is sitting at around 6% in the state of charge. We'll go and start the car and see what sort of amps it's uh, putting in. working that's got to be a good thing old car at idle it's putting in 37 amps The shunt 13.3 volts, 35 amps going in. They're pretty close. Maybe a few revs, see what happens.
not sure what the uh, this DC is showing there yet. Check that footage later, but uh, according to that, uh, it was put in 39 amps. Yep, everything's working, that's good. Uh, just another quick test while I'm mucking around. Uh, I've just got a 120 watt solar blanket laying on the ground. So I'll just plug in and I'll see what it does. Currently, two, 62%. Took a little, little while for it to kick in, but and now it's putting in two, three amps. Yeah, just readjusted the panel. Now yeah, it's putting in 4.6 according to the app. 4.3 on the DC DC. Hey guys, just something to be mindful of. Um, so the engine's turned off now, but the inner drive will keep running until it drops. Uh, I think it was 12.8 volts. But there's something else to be mindful of is if you want to charge your um, I suppose your car battery at the front the start battery. Uh, generally, you only put in five, six amps if you're doing a trickle charge. Whereas the DC DC, if the battery lock, this one is low on charge, will pull 30, 40 amps, which will drain your start battery flat. Um, offset to what you're trying to achieve, obviously, when you're trying to uh, trickle charge it up. So just bear in mind to uh, disconnect or isolate your auxiliary batteries that have DC DC charge hooked up to them. Uh, otherwise you will flatten the house battery uh, while trying to charge it because the DC DC is to take all the I suppose available amps to charge your own battery. Alright, hopefully that'll uh, turn off now. Yep, there you go. So it's just disconnected. Just got below that 12.8. That should shut itself down directly. Now that everything's installed, uh, just some learnings uh, with the Smart Shunt. Uh, the 50 litre Waco draws 4.6 amps when running, but only average 0.96 of an amp uh, per hour over 46 hours. Uh, Sroco fans, I think they claim 0.38 amps on full power. Uh, 0.4 amps is, is what the Smart Shunt shows. Uh, our shower setup, just like a little portable shower, draws 1.75 amps when running and our camp lights draw 0.2 to 0.4 amps per hour. That gives a bit of an idea of what uh, things run and how many amps they draw. A um, bit of useful information. Alright guys, got any questions, feel free to ask. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. Yeah, any questions, let me know in the comments below. Cheers guys.